there is one thing I do the night before the game. I just take a shower, kind of put my head down, turn all the lights off, and kind of just relax. And the only place I can think about is him, man. It's everything that he's done for me. For Maurice Jones Drew, he was the motivating force in his life. He didn't just do everything, he meant everything. Hand off Jones Drew, up the middle. Touchdown, Jones Drew! And look at him go, he's on the run to the end zone. 10, 5, touchdown Jaguars! He is the man Jones Drew still thinks about every day. His grandfather, Maurice Jones. This is the road my grandpa used to live on, Hanole Valley. Still there. The house is still there, too. He just kind of drove me to be who I am today. If it wasn't for him, I'd probably be, I don't know where I'd be. Every time he runs out onto the football field, the 5'7", 210-pound Jones Drew carries his grandfather with him not just in his heart, but on his back as well. Growing up outside of Oakland, California, the future star running back of the Jacksonville Jaguars was known as Maurice Drew. His mother and stepfather worked two jobs each to help support the family. His biological father was rarely present, so Maurice's maternal grandparents helped raise him. He grew especially close to his grandfather, who he was named after and affectionately called Papa. I remember when I brought him home from the hospital, my father had to be the one to carry him upstairs because he didn't trust me and no one else to carry him up the steps. <laughs> I think we were friends more than anything. Anytime I had problems at school, I can tell him. Uh, me and him were kind of on the same level, you know? He's that friend that you have that's so much like you, you can't even get mad at him. Maurice Drew and his grandfather, who himself had once played Division I basketball, bonded over sports, especially football, which Drew began playing at the age of seven. When I first started playing flag football, he was like, hey, man, you got to you gotta believe you're great, man. You got to believe it. You know, if you don't believe it, nobody else will. I believe in you, though. Don't worry about it. He was like, but you got to wear this Superman shirt, man. You got you to feel like, a, like you're unstoppable. The Superman shirt make you feel good. Drew continued to wear a Superman t-shirt and became a star running back and sprinter at Powerhouse De La Salle High School. In his senior year, he scored 26 touchdowns, leading De La Salle to a 13-0 record and the 2002 state championship. His grandfather never missed a single practice, game, or track meet. And he always knew how to motivate his grandson, like he did in the spring of 2003. We were running a track meet, and the guy I was racing was supposedly supposed to be faster than I was. So all night, my grandpa was calling, like, you ready for tomorrow? And he brings these goggles. And he goes, you don't need these when you kick this gravel in your face. So we come up to the 100. So now I'm, I'm upset now. I'm real mad. I'm, you know, I'm warming up. I'm getting all ready. <laughs> I opened up on that dude so fast. I got off the blocks in the 100 meet. I think I went up running like a 10-6. I mean, that's just kind of the stuff he, what he did, you know, just, you know, mess with me, make me, you know, make me work hard. The motivation his grandfather provided helped Maurice earn dozens of scholarship offers. He eventually committed to UCLA to play football. And Papa, who made the six-hour drive from the Bay Area for all of the Bruins' home games, couldn't have been prouder. If the gates opened an hour and a half before, he, was, he, he would leave me and my mother in the parking lot and be inside the stadium, sitting down. Because when Maurice came out on the field, he wanted him to know where he was sitting. He always made me feel like I was the best at everything, you know? Made me feel like I was worth something, at least. I could have been, I don't know, the best dog poop cleaner upper. He was happy regardless of what I did. Maurice Drew thrived at UCLA. In his first two seasons, he scored 19 touchdowns. When he became a junior, he was faced with the difficult decision of whether to enter the NFL draft. And like he had so many times before, he sought advice from his grandfather. He was like, I think, I think you should go to the draft. I'm like, if you think so, I was like, it depends on, I was like, what if I don't have a good year? He's like, oh, don't worry about that. He's like, you don't have a fine. You'll be, you'll be good, you'll have a great year. Drew scored a touchdown on UCLA's first play from scrimmage to kick off the 2005 season. 
In the Bruins' second game against Rice, he scored twice in the first half. Here's Drew up the middle. Touchdown! There's Maurice Drew. He's got all sorts of room. He'll cut it back inside. He'll beat the putter. Touchdown, UCLA! I'm coming over the sidelines, and they grab me like, yo, you know, you got to go get dressed. I'm like, for what, the game went over? And they're like, well, your grandpa was sick. He had to go to the hospital. So I was like, all right. So I just took off running. In the third quarter of the game, in section three of the Rose Bowl, Maurice Jones had suffered a heart attack. An ambulance rushed him to a nearby hospital, but it was too late. By the time his grandson arrived, Papa was gone. He was 69. He wouldn't talk to me. He wouldn't talk to anybody. He wanted to go see my dad by himself. He didn't want nobody to go in a room with him. And I went to the room he was in, and, and it was just like, you know, what can I say to you, man? And there's nothing I could say. You know, so I just sat there for about 45 minutes staring at him. Heartbroken and not sure how he could continue playing football without his grandfather, Maurice made a decision. UCLA, they told me whatever I wanted, you know, they'd give me anything I needed. I just needed one thing, and, and I was to have Jones put on the back of my jersey. That, that was it. And, he, you know, I just wanted to honor him. That's the only way I felt like I could honor him. On September 17th, 2005, one week after the passing of his grandfather, Maurice Jones, he officially became known as Maurice Jones Drew. When you go into the locker room and you see your jersey out for the first time with that name on it. I started crying. All these emotions started running through me. I never felt before because I've never been real that emotional about anything. He helped lead UCLA to a 41 to 24 win over number 21 ranked Oklahoma. Here's Maurice Drew into the end zone. Touchdown UCLA and scored the game-clinching touchdown, his first TD as Maurice Jones drew. Four days later, he was a pallbearer at his grandfather's funeral. It hit me when uh, we got to the funeral, and I went and touched him. I don't know if you ever touched a dead body, but there's no blood, there's no meat or anything. It's just like skin and bones, that's it. I was like, you know, whoa after everybody said their goodbyes or everything, they put him in that crate. And uh, that's the worst sound I've ever heard in my life when they reel somebody down into the ground. That, that, that I will never forget that sound ever again. Like his grandfather had wanted, Jones Drew entered the NFL draft after his junior season and expected to get selected in the first round. But despite scoring 20 touchdowns in the 2005 season, and performing well at the NFL Combine, he fell to the late second round. I got drafted 60th overall. I was just sitting in this room with my agents, by myself with them, pretty much crying because I, I didn't know what, what I did wrong. I was trying to figure out what I did wrong because my grandfather always told me, you know, if you do everything right, pieces are gonna fall in place. So while his grandfather's name on the back of his jersey reminds him of the man who always believed in him, Jones Drew says he changed his number from the 21 he wore in college to remind him of all those who didn't. You know, everyone's telling me I'm too small to do this, I'm too small to do that. That always reminds me. Every time I go in the locker room, I see that number. It reminds you of what? I was disrespected by all 32 teams, even the Jaguars. Since his rookie season in 2005, Jones Drew has scored 58 touchdowns. Second only to Jets running back, LaDainian Tomlinson. With Maurice, you don't know if he's going to run it or he's going to catch it. Screen pass, run routes out the backfield. And so that's what makes him so dangerous. And that's why he's been able to, to score as many touchdowns as he has. He doesn't stop. I mean, he doesn't stop. He, he, he goes through everything. You know, a small, compact guy like a Pac-Man. And no matter what, he's always chomping at those little white things. And you know what I'm saying? Eventually, he's going to find that ghost, which is a touchdown, <laughs> you know? Jones Drew says he can still feel his grandfather's influence in his life. 
Like when he plays with the son he named after him, Maurice Jones Drew II. There you go. It's better to go by yourself, though, because you feel, you, you know, you don't have to worry about other people and their emotions. You do your emotions. Jones Drew has visited his grandfather's grave on Papa's birthday, Father's Day, and most recently in July. I don't, I don't want to call it a happy feeling or a sad feeling. It's kind of it's just a little, I just don't like it. I don't know why, though. I, I just don't like it at all. It just makes me feel a little uneasy, you know? My mother and my grandmother told me he died where he, where he wanted to die, you know, watching, watching me play ball. David hands it off to Drew, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Maurice Jones Drew still wears that S on his chest underneath his uniform for every game, just like his grandfather taught him to. But to him, those letters on his back spell out the name of his true hero. The reason I am who I am is because of him. When I step in the locker room, I see that jersey. I start to feel all these thoughts, and you get the tinglys, and your skin starts to bump up a little bit. You know, and it's about time to go play. It's been like that ever since he passed away.